Now, with that in mind, folks, I start to look at adaptation. Now, adaptation is going to be a key theme for us in this particular session. We're going to look at it a lot. Remember, adaptation, just to remind you what this means, we are talking about the effects. We are talking about the effects of, I'm going to put LT, long-term training. So if we do lots of aerobic, lots of strength, lots of intro, whatever it happens to be, if we do that training again and again and again over a cycle of months and years, what is going to be an effect on the body? Now, we've got a question here which is asking us, state two skeletal adaptations. Notice the importance of that word. Now, obviously, we're looking at the section of skeletal adaptation, so of course it's that. But this could be cardiovascular. This could be respiratory. And we'll come to those later on, by the way. But state two skeletal adaptations from weight-bearing exercise such as running. Well, what would we expect? Well, we'd expect increased strength of the bone. But one of the terms I'm going to encourage you to incorporate into your answers is tensile strength. Now, funnily enough, Bones are not the strongest structures one can have, not in terms of like pure force transmission, you know, but effectively that not that much force goes through bones, quite a bit, but not huge, right? But what bones are really good at is tensile strength, which has got, they've got strength and a touch of flexibility. So consider tensile strength as such something like the bones can flex slightly there because they're hollow, long bones that is, you know, think about the arms and the legs, those long bones, they've effectively got a cavity through the middle. They can sort of bend slightly, they've got this tensile strength and they can do that without breaking. But the other thing is um, effectively, you know, state two uh, adaptations, we also get through greater uptake, greater uptake of, and of course, what is it going to, it's going to build this? calcium through greater up to calcium we experience greater i mean i meant to make this shorter greater bone density okay now one of the things i've just done here folks and i know it's like a very very sort of blunt point to make is i've made sure that i've not left information and knowledge in my mind and i just want to be get on oh, the point i'm going to make to you sort of regularly today just notice what i've done here folks i've got my key phrase down tensile strength circle tick one mark but down here through greater uptake of calcium i've got my greater bone density there that's my key terminology greater bone density but i know it's from calcium uptake so i'm getting that into my answer there's my max i pick up my two when we do it that way now we want to take this a bit further folks and i want to introduce you to the eio model teachers students for that matter this is a model i've ex i've written about very extensively and it's something that i do encourage you to use when you're in your exam so what i've done here folks in essence pretty much everyone in the exam is going to know that a skeletal adaptation is bone density stronger strength of bone greater strength of ligaments is greater increased ability everybody knows those but what i want you to do to mark yourself out as a student who who knows this stuff better is to take that further what for example is the impact of increased bone density and we're going to come back to these in the future further in this session by the way so increased bone density means the bone can take on more weight sorry let me read it properly can take on more weight bearing without damage or pain so they can, we can do more weight bearing without there being damage or pain and what's the outcome of that for a rugby player so a rugby player can lift a teammate in the line out with greater force and we could say without damage guys can you see how i've taken my example of adaptation its impact here is more weight bearing its outcome here is that we perform better in rugby lineouts by lifting higher without in fact let me put this in here without without pain guys that that is what we want our students to be able to do if you can go from example to impact to outcome i guarantee you you're going to pick up more marks than the average person is going to do who's not doing this let's look at another one stronger bones it's kind of linked isn't it more force can be applied to a bone by the muscle so we've got greater force transmission that's the impact what does it mean a rugby player can contract muscles in the arms with greater force to wrap in the tackle and drive the opponent back can you see this drive the opponent back because they've got more force in the tackle why because there's more force being translated or transmitted from muscle to bone so it's not just about the increased strength of bone it's the impact and the outcome of that in this case in a rugby player rugby player what about the increased strength of ligaments the joints can be moved through a greater dynamic movements without the risk of injury so a rugby player that's the impact a rugby player can make quicker and faster change of direction by pushing through the ankle and greater angles without ankle sprains so in other words they can be more up arrow dynamic and experience less injury because those ligaments are more stable around the ankle now i could go further in that point you know they're they're quicker to push off one for another therefore they beat their opponent more regularly 
different outcomes you could use. And we've got increased stability at the joint. Joint injuries are less likely, even extreme circumstances. There's the impact. Rugby player lands on very hard ground with their shoulder first, but their shoulder does not dislocate and they can play on. So you see stability of joints, Okay, so more extreme circumstances. So our rugby play, let's imagine this rugby match has been played in May. I don't know, it's a sevens tournament or something. And they're landing with their shoulder on the ground. And what happens is they do not dislocate. That is the outcome. And they can play on, go on to win the match, blah, blah, score the winning try, kick the conversion, blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is you decide to include in your answers. But my point is this one, folks. When you are writing your adaptations, Go for your example adaptation, the impact it has, and what does that have as an outcome on performance? In this case, I've used rugby as my particular example of that thing. Okay, folks, let's move on to the aerobic system. So we're jumping into energy here. So look, what we've got here is we've got a six mark level question. So just to be clear, this is, let me make that a darker green. This is extended writing. We need to be considering it in that way. And we've got the idea of evaluate the contribution the aerobic system makes to a competitive game of basketball. So we've got this aerobic system. How important is it to this? That's what we're looking at here. So notice the language I'm going to use here. A strength, I meant to make that the same green, but I didn't quite find it. A strength of the aerobic system is that it is long duration and as basketball lasts an hour, the system can contribute throughout. Okay, so there's a clear strength. It's long duration, a game lasts 60 minutes, that is going to be contributing fantastically. Moreover, it is also positive, and I start to be thinking why I'm adding these types of word in here. Positive during a recovery period such as timeouts and the end of quarter when the aerobic system actually is the vehicle to recover the anaerobic system. Now, we'll just pause there. One thing to remember about the aerobic system is it is literally the recovery system for both the ATP PC system and also the lactic acid or glycolytic system. Okay, so it is the recovery mechanism for those. But notice the key words a strength, a positive. Let's go further. Uh, where are we? Without the aerobic system, the anaerobic systems cannot recover. The aerobic system is advantageous. Notice the type of language I am using here. Is advantageous during moderate intensity movements, such as jogging back down court to set up zone defense, or when in zone defense, waiting for the attack to occur. A final strength, coming back to where we started here, a final strength is that the aerobic system does not produce any fatiguing product byproducts and is therefore sustainable. So it doesn't produce, for example, lactic acid, therefore it's sustainable over time. Now, I just want you to look at the nature of those words. A strength, a positive, it's advantageous, another strength. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my kind of red colour. Something the aerobic system, however... How, oh, that red's pretty good. Pretty good match. However, comma, so I'm doing, going into my negatives now. The aerobic system provides a very small proportion of energy during high-intensity movements such as rebounds or sprints. So that's a weakness. Look at this one. Another disadvantage. Another disadvantage is that uh, is is that is that it that? <laughs> I think it's a mistake. Is that oxygen is not readily available in the cell and needs to be delivered so there's a weakness of this anaerobic systems have to fill this immediacy gap so a weakness is there's an immediacy gap for the aerobic system it doesn't gear up straight away therefore we've got the anaerobic systems having to do that and guys notice at the end we've got a conclusion as well in conclusion the aerobic system is crucial in basketball but without the anaerobic systems basketball would be very slow one pace game it is the combination of any systems that allow basketball to be so dynamic and varied but guys this is my point to you that i want to make i have clearly been asked an evaluate question and notice what i've done here i have done a series of strengths positives evaluative pluses i have then gone on to do a series of negatives. Now, I think it's fair to say that my negatives are not as thorough as my positives. Maybe I could have done more. And then, guys, finally, whenever we evaluate something, we really should be considering that we need to conclude and bring that summary to a judgment. Now, if we have a look at the level descriptors that are down here, okay, let's have a look at this. The level descriptors, for us to be in the top band, 
We've got mostly accurate knowledge. Well, our person's done that. Most of the points made will be relative, re, uh, relevant to the question that's been done. And it displays a well-developed and logical discussion. So there's a structure to the answer, which clearly considers a range of different aspects and how they interrelate in a sustained way. So guys, could you see here, can you see here how our student has clearly thought about that command, has made the link from the error system to the game of basketball throughout the answer. They've clearly shown positives and negatives, and they've concluded. Now, the question we've got to ask ourselves is, if we think they're in the top band there, are they worth five? Are they worth six? Was there four in there as well? I can't remember. There's just five or six. Which should we give them? Well, if we were being super harsh, could we say there were only two disadvantages? Only two disadvantages. Would that mean that they would only get five and not six? But then we could say, only two disadvantages, but then we could say, well, hang on a second. They've made four strengths at least, two disadvantages, a relevant conclusion. Let's be fair and give this person the six out of six that they deserve. Now, could you see for me why, if this person had not done any disadvantages, if they hadn't done maybe just one strength, one, one weakness, could you see how this would be a two or three out of six answer we've got to fulfill that criteria folks it's easy learning about the aerobic system but structuring your answers into an evaluative structure is a good one now just remember to evaluate effectively folks we need to do positives effectively we need to do negatives and folks please don't forget that when we do an evaluation there should be a conclusion to some degree. Now, different conclusions can be done in different ways, but when we're evaluating, we are we have got to bring things to a judgment. That's the nature of what evaluating is. And I thought that would be a nice example. Now, I've got a question there. Uh, what got a question just here? Could you repeat this type of answer for other systems? So just imagine, I'll leave that one with you, but for imagine, uh, let's say that you were looking at the glycolytic or the lactic, uh, by the way, glyc glycolytic, lactic acids is the same thing glycolytic or lactic acid system or or you were doing the atp pc system could you now go and structure an answer in the same way could you link it to a different activity for example could you say not uh, not for basketball but for goalkeeping in hockey or whatever or 800 meter running or whatever it is that you want to choose that's great practice for you guys to go and get yourself stuck into some interesting answers So folks, what seems to be a super simple question for short-term muscular responses is what uh, is just stating three short-term responses to a 20-minute training run. And really what we're gonna do is we're gonna answer this. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time just looking at the mark scheme for this. So first of all, we would expect to see an increase strength of muscle contraction. So over the course of that 20 minute run, effectively muscle contractions of course are going to be are going to be greater than they are at rest. Of course that's something we'd expect. We'd also expect that muscle temperature would increase. That's nice and simple. So nothing too spectacular there. Obviously that um uh, thermogenic aerobic resp uh, uh, that energy releasing aerobic respiration is going to release heat by definition and we're also going to get increased muscle pliability so in other words the muscles are going to be able to uh, apply their force through a greater range of motion or a full range of motion as a result of course each of those would hopefully pick us up one mark now what I've done here, a very simple thing, is I've asked just, just to have a look at this mark scheme and what actually would pick us up marks. So let's just have a little look here. Nothing too surprising. We get one for increased blood supply. Fine, we didn't include that one, but we got muscle temperature, pliability, and strength of contraction. So we picked up one mark, two marks, and three marks for those two points there. But I want us to focus here. And we've got the idea, look at the mark scheme for this question, and we've got a question just below this, which is, what do you notice about points five and six? Now, points five and six are just a return to a point I made earlier in this session. They tell us lactate accumulation is unlikely to occur because it's not high intensity, and micro tears are unlikely as the exercise is not high intensity. So one of the things here is sometimes you will get credit, you will get credit for what we call the negative, okay? Now, let me be clear. You can sometimes get credit for saying what something is not okay what something 
is not. Now, what I mean is this is contextual, of course, because when we think about this question above, if this had been like a, a question about not a 20 minute training run, but some interval training or some sprinting, of course, these points here would be high intensity exercise. Therefore, you get obla lactate accumulation. We get micro tears because it's high intensity. But because this is moderate, we can also pick up credit by saying, look, it isn't intense. What something is not is it's not intense, so it's not causing micro tears. It's not causing, for example, um, uh, obla. And that's a little tip. Say what something is not. That is something that very few students do, and it's something that can pick you up credit. Now, it's got to be in context. You can't say, for example, 20-minute uh, um, um, training run won't turn you into a toad, because obviously that's not in context. It's irrelevant, okay? It's got to be in context. If it was another type of training, anaerobic, you would get those microtones, you would get that obla. So this is in context, say, that isn't happening here. And that's something for you to consider. It's good technique. Sometimes students say to me, oh, I run out of things to write. Well, there's a good example of how to in increase the variety of what you write about. Okay, so let's have a think about, um, let's have a think about um, this kind of, uh, this kind of table here. So we've got completely stable. Short-term muscular responses. We've got the idea of moderate exercise and maximum exercise. So just notice the difference. So we've got here increased blood supply. Does that happen for moderate exercise? It does. So we can tick that and we can also say increased blood supply. But can you also say see how that would be lesser than here? This would be more Increased muscle temperature, we got the same here? Yes, we've got increased muscle temp for moderate exercise, absolutely fine. So we've got the same thing, muscle temperatures here. Increased muscle pliability, yes, we've got the same. Increased muscle pliability, so this is the same. So that can be applied to both moderate and maximal exercise. We've got increased speed and strength of muscle contractions, yes, it's the same. We've got increased speed, strength, I'll just put of contractions, strength contractions, but here, this is where I wanna be specific, coming back to that masking point. Would we get micro tears? No, we would get no micro tears for our sub maximal moderate intensity. Would we get lactate accumulation? No, we would not get accumulation. Again, I just wanted to make that point to you because sometimes we need to look at the detail of a question. Can you see now? Why, this question here, if I had said something like, if I had not said that and I'd have said lactate accumulation, can you see how that would be wrong for that question? Because it's a training jog, it's a training run. We're not working at that intensity. We're not doing maximal work. It's 20 minutes of exercise. So something for you to be aware of in that case.